Okay, let's get a bit more practical and see how we can confirm if our interfaces are working correctly. First, we'll take a look at what interfaces we have with Show Interface Description. These are the descriptions we add to interfaces during configuration. Here we have an interface connecting to a router and another interface connecting to a switch. Now we'll get some high level information with Show Interface Status. In the port column, we can see the interface itself and right next to that is the name or description. The status column tells us right away if the interface is connected to something or not. If this does not say connected, you probably need to check if the cable is connected at both ends. The VLAN column will show the VLAN ID if this is an access port, or it will show trunk if it's a trunk port. The duplex column shows if this interface is in full or half duplex. If there's an A here, it means that the interface is configured using auto negotiation. And the speed column, it's much the same. Finally, the type column. This shows the interface type, which will vary depending on what interfaces are available in your switch or router. Another way we could look at it is with Show Interfaces Summary. This shows the interfaces over on the left, as well as a lot of counters. The key to understanding the counters is listed above the table, but let me summarize. The first three columns are queues. These are holding areas for packets while they're being processed. These values should stay fairly low, if these start growing, then your switch is not processing packets fast enough. The next four columns are the receive and transmit rate in bits per second and packets per second. Anything with an RX refers to the receive rate while TX is transmit. As you can see, not much is happening on this switch right now. If we see that rates are approaching the limit of the link, then it might be time to upgrade the link. So imagine that we suspect a particular interface is causing problems. We can dig deeper into this with Show Interfaces, followed by the interface that we want to look at. In our case, Show Interfaces GI0 slash 1. This brings up a lot of information, which can be intimidating at first. For now, we'll just pick out some of the interesting bits. In the first line, we can see that the interface is up, and the line protocol is also up. The interface being up refers to the physical interface. If this is down, then the cable is most likely unplugged. If it's listed as administratively down, then we've manually shut down the interface ourselves. If the interface is down, then the line protocol will also be down. If the interface was up and the line protocol was down, then this might indicate a cable fault or a mismatch in configuration between the two devices. If this happens, Check the speed, duplex, and trunk settings, and make sure they're the same between both ends of the link. On the next two lines, we can see the interface type, such as Gigabit Ethernet, the MAC address and burned-in address, and the description. The following two show us the MTU of this interface, as we discussed earlier, the bandwidth of this interface in kilobits per second, so one million would be one gig, and then reliability, TX load, and RX load. These are values out of 255, which sounds weird, but it's just because it's an 8-bit number. Reliability refers to how many packets this interface is dropping. We want this number to be 255, which means it's 100% reliable. TX load and RX load is how much of the bandwidth is being used for transmitting and receiving. That means a load of 255 means the interface is at 100% capacity, which would not be a good thing. Further down the list, we can see the duplex setting, which should usually say full duplex, the speed, such as 1000 megabit per second, and the media type. Much of this is the same information we got from our other commands. There are often several different ways to get the information we need. Just past halfway, we can see the five minute averages of the input and output rates. Sometimes we have high levels of traffic in short bursts, and other times we might have high levels for a long time. So if the five minute average is quite high, then we have a sustained high traffic rate. If it's regularly near maximum, then we need to look at upgrading our links. The large section at the bottom includes various counters. This includes how many packets and bytes an interface has received and transmitted. 
and how many are using multicast. There are a lot of other counters too. Collisions, which are when Ethernet collisions have occurred. This might happen if you have an old-fashioned hub in place, or sometimes it'll happen if a cable is longer than it should be. Runts are packets that are discarded because they're too small. That is, less than 64 bytes. This is generally a byproduct of collisions, so once again, look out for hubs or cables that are too long. Giants are packets that are discarded for being too big. That is, if the frame is bigger than 1518 bytes and it can't be fragmented for some reason. CRC means the checksum on the frame has failed. This could be because the frame is being corrupted somewhere, or there's a bad cable, or the cable is too long, or there's interference from an outside source. There's a lot of information here, and I understand this can be overwhelming. So here's a pro tip. We can filter the output to just show the parts we're interested in. Firstly, we can pipe any command through the include command. This only displays the lines that match our input. If you're familiar with Linux, this is like a simplified version of grep. Here, we're filtering our previous output to only show lines that include the word rate. This makes it much simpler if we know what we're looking for. We can even use this to look at the data rates for all interfaces at once. But notice that it hasn't given us the interface name when we do this, which makes it a bit hard to tell which interface has a high data rate. So we can get a little bit fancy. The include command uses regex. If you're not familiar with what regex is, well, it's simply an advanced method for matching things. So what we can do is use include and then put the words rate and ethernet inside brackets. Notice that they're separated by the pipe character. In regex language, this means or. So we're asking to see any line that includes the word rate or the word ethernet. This tidies things up a bit. Okay, here's the next tip. First, look at the counters for interface gig 0 slash 1 again. There's a lot of counters and maybe a lot of errors, but how long have they been here? Do these represent a current problem or does it represent a problem that happened a month ago or a year ago? What we can do is we can clear these counters with the clear counters command. This can be done for all interfaces or just the ones we want. Now we can look at the counters again and see if the error counts are going up or are they staying at zero? If they're going up, then that means we're seeing a problem right now. Here's an interesting question for you to consider. Can you see what might be wrong with this interface based on this output? Here's another opportunity for you to test your skills in the lab. This is the same topology as the last video, so I'm sure you're comfortable with it. This time, the customer has reported network issues. You have been given the task of collecting troubleshooting information as well as shutting down redundant interfaces. Are you up to the challenge? When we connect multiple switches together, we need to consider the impact of loops in the network. Spanning tree is the technology that helps us to manage this. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at how spanning tree works in detail.